بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. This video is about the volume of an LP ball in the n-dimensional space. The LP ball is the set of n-dimensional vectors such that the LP ball of the vector is less than or equal to a positive real number, which is the radius small r. The LP ball is the summation i from 1 to n, the magnitude of xi to the power p, and then after doing the sum, we take the bth root. P is a real number greater than or equal to 1. We want to obtain the Lobeck measure or the volume of this set. The volume has three parameters, n, which is the dimension of the space, a positive integer, p, which is a real number greater than or equal to 1, and then the radius r, which is a positive real number. The volume is given by this integral in Cartesian coordinates, and the domain of integration is where the LB norm of x is less than or equal to r. Because of symmetry, we can just write down this n-dimensional integral as 2 to the power n times this n-dimensional integral where we start integrating from 0. Now that the x's are positive, we can write down this condition as x1 over r to the power p plus x2 over r to the power p all the way to xn over r to the power p. This summation must be less than or equal to 1. We do change the variables. Let yi for i from 1 to n be equal to xi over r all to the power p over 2. Then xi over r is equal to yi to the power 2 over p. The domain of integration is given now by the inequality that y1 squared plus y2 squared all the way to yn squared is less than or equal to 1. This is our n-dimensional integral using the variables from y1 to yn. When we do the change of variables, we get this outside factor 2 over p r all to the power n. And let's not forget this 2 to the power n. So now our outside factor is 4 r over p all to the power n. Let's rewrite this condition here as y1 squared plus y2 squared to y n minus 1 squared less than or equal to 1 minus y n squared. Because the sum of the squares is less than or equal to 1, then each of those non negative variables is in the range from 0 to 1. So we will rewrite our n dimensional integral as an integral with respect to yn, and yn is from 0 to 1. For the other variables, they are constrained to satisfy this inequality. The summation i from 1 to n minus 1, y i squared, must be less than or equal to 1 minus y n squared. When y n is not exactly equal to 1, we can divide both sides by 1 minus y n squared. And now the domain of integration for these n minus 1 integrals is summation i from 1 to n minus 1, y i divided by the square root of 1 minus y n squared, whole square. This summation should be less than or equal to 1. Let's do another change of variables. We replace this y i over the square root of 1 minus y n squared by z i. So y i is given by z i, and then times the square root of 1 minus y n squared. And d y i is d z y times this factor. Now the inner n minus 1 integrals are now written in terms of the new variables from z1 to zn minus 1. For this product here, each yi is replaced by zi, and then we have this factor. So this product, the product i from 1 to n minus 1 yi, all to the power 2 over p minus 1. This will be the product i from 1 to n minus 1 zi. But then we have this factor will be raised to the power n minus 1. So we have 1 minus yn squared to the power n minus 1 over 2. And then this will be raised to the power 2 over p minus 1. So this is for this term here. And then for the differentials, we get dz1 all the way to dzn minus 1. But then this vector here will be multiplied by itself n minus 1 times. So inside the integral, we will have this product raised to the power 2 over p minus 1. And then 1 minus yn squared is raised to the power. From here, we have n minus 1 over 2. 2 over p minus 1, and then we have an extra n minus 1 over 2. And so the exponent now is n minus 1 over 2 times 2 over b, which is n minus 1 over b. This is the vector here. And then we have the integral with respect to the variables from z1 to zn minus 1. We can take this 4r divided by p to the power n and split it into 4r divided by p, and then 4r divided by p all to the power n minus 1. The n minus 1 dimensional integral with respect to the variables from z1 to zn minus 1 is exactly the volume of an LP ball in n minus 1 dimensions. 
So this is the volume in n dimensions. It is 4r divided by p or to the power n. And then we have an integral. The integrand is the product raised to the power 2 divided by b minus 1. And then the domain of integration is the sum of squares less than or equal to 1. If we look down here, we have 4r divided by p to the power n minus 1. We have here the product from z1 to zn minus 1 raised to the power 2 over p minus 1. And then the domain of integration is also the sum of the squares less than or equal to 1. So this is, again, the volume of the LP ball in the n minus 1 dimensional space. We can write down this expression relating the volume in n dimensions and n minus 1 dimensions. This volume is equal to that volume times 4r divided by p. And then we have an integral. This is the integral with respect to the variable yn. Recall the beta integral. Beta of a comma b, where these are, let's take them to be positive real numbers. This is the integral from 0 to 1, t to the power a minus 1, 1 minus t to the power b minus 1 dt. If we look here, we have something very close to the beta integral. So what we can do is a change of variables. Let t be equal to y n squared. If we do this exchange, it keeps the integration from 0 to 1. And now the integrand looks like t to the power 1 over p minus 1. And this becomes 1 minus t to the power n minus 1 over p dt. Comparing, this is 1 half. We get 1 half because yn is equal to t to the power 1 over 2. So dyn is 1 half t to the minus 1 over 2 dt. This integral here is 1 half theta of 1 over p. And then this number plus 1, n minus 1 over p plus 1. The beta function is related to the gamma function. Beta of a comma b is equal to gamma of a, gamma of b, divided by gamma of the sum a plus b. So this beta function can be written as gamma of 1 over p, then gamma n minus 1 over p plus 1. And then in the denominator, we have gamma of the sum of these two guys. And this is n over p plus 1. So this is the relationship between the volume of the L p ball with radius r in n dimensions and n minus 1 dimensions. These two volumes are related with this factor here. Before proceeding, note that for the gamma function, we have z gamma z is equal to gamma z plus 1. So we have a factor 1 over p. So 1 over p, gamma 1 over p can be written as gamma of 1 over p plus 1. We can take this volume in n minus 1 dimensions and express it in terms of the volume in n minus 2 dimensions. This is equal to 2r gamma of 1 over p plus 1. And then gamma of n minus 2 over p plus 1 divided by gamma of n minus 1 over p plus 1. Then the volume n minus 2 p comma r. 2r gamma 1 over p plus 1 appears twice. So it appears here squared. Then we have this ratio of gamma functions. is multiplied by this ratio of gamma functions. But this term is exactly that term. So we are left with gamma of n minus 2 over p plus 1 divided by gamma of n over p plus 1. And this will be a relation between the volume in n dimensions and n minus 2 dimensions. We can keep doing this. We end up with the volume in n dimensions related to the volume in one dimension, small n equal to 1. And this volume in one dimension is multiplied by this factor, 2r times gamma of 1 over p plus 1 raised to the power n minus 1, which is the difference between n and 1. And then we have gamma 1 over p plus 1 divided by gamma n over p plus 1. We just have one step to finish this off. What is the volume in one dimension? In one dimension, things are straightforward. Now we have the variable x1, and we have the interval from minus r to r. And we ask ourselves, what is the volume? The bag measure, which in this particular case is the length, such that the absolute value of x1 raised to the power b, and there is nothing but x1. So we raise x2 to the power 1 over p. That's just the magnitude or absolute value of x1. So this must be less than or equal to r. This is the LB ball in one dimension. Simply, what we need is the volume or the length of this interval, 2r. So this quantity here is 2r. And now we have an expression for the volume of the LP ball with radius r in the n-dimensional space. It is 2 times the gamma of 1 over p plus 1 times r, all raised to the power n. Then we divide by gamma of n over p plus 1. If we talk about the L2 norm, which is used to measure Euclidean distances, then P is equal to 2. In the numerator, we have 2 times gamma of 1 over P plus 1. This is equal to 2 times gamma of 1 half plus 1, that's 3 over 2. 
gamma 3 over 2 is 1 half times gamma 1 half. So 2 times 1 half is 1, and gamma of 1 half is square root pi. The volume now will be pi to the power n over 2 times r to the power n, and then we have in the denominator gamma of n over 2 plus 1.